Feast TV is brought to you with support by Missouri Wines, Lake Hole Cool and Air, Whole Foods Market at Town & Country in the Galleria, and the Raphael Hotel. In this episode of Feast TV, we are exploring the top culinary trends like fast, casual concepts, bike delivery in the city, artisan shelf-stable products, and southern comfort food like this hot chicken at Magnolia's in Kansas City. I'm Pat Neville, and this is Feast TV. So this episode of Feast TV is all about trends in the culinary industry. And one of the biggest trends in food right now is Southern food. So today I'm going to be making collard greens with crispy shallots and pimento cheese. And I am going to be pairing all of that with a dry rosé. And this one happens to be from Stone Hill, which is in the Herman region of Missouri. Rosé is a really nice, versatile wine. It isn't something that that will overpower uh, flavors in the way that sometimes red wines can. And it's gonna be a really nice pair for the two very different types of dishes that I'm making today. So our very first segment that we're going to take you to is Kansas City. We're gonna go to Magnolia's and meet the woman behind one of that city's best Southern eateries. Hi, I'm Chef Shanita McAfee Bryant. We're in Kansas City at Magnolia's. Come on guys, let's get cooking. How did you come up with the menu items? Trial and error a lot. So when I was pregnant, I came up with a lot of crazy stuff. <laughs> because it's like, oh, ooh, that's gonna be really good. And then, you know, it's all like pregnancy. <laughs> so that's when we came up with the Magnolia's French Toast. It's the one with the seven up pound cake, and the warm peach compote with crumbled cake toppings and maple whipped cream. That is not like a normal person. <laughs> no normal person is like, oh yes, that's the one who is pregnant and like, ooh, I want some cake and I wanted like French toast. So I have like a take on Nashville hot chicken wings. It's the Midwest, so you know you have to have chicken. People will have a heart attack here if there's no chicken. <laughs> we do brine ours. They, you know, traditionally, if you're gonna go like to a Nashville type place, they're gonna go like with a straight like cayenne pepper brine, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be really, really spicy. So I'm trying to meet you somewhere in the middle with that. And southern food is very classic. There are yes. definite dishes that are southern in quotation marks. Yes. So how do you put your own stamp on that? And so I was like, how can I do Alfredo, but make it like shrimp and grits. Yeah. So we use um, stone ground grits. My, my grandmother grew up in North Carolina, and so this food is very comforting to me because it right. reminds me of my childhood. And the stone ground grit, it's not the same if you have those industrialized. No, I don't eat um, instant grits. No, why would you? I just can't do it. Stone ground or I'll just have like cream of wheat or something. I just don't want it. So I do a little salt and pepper in there and then we use a Parmesan cheese. It's like Parmesan Fontina and um, Asiago that goes in there too. So they're cheesy, but they're not like cheddar cheesy. Because I'm, remember, I'm thinking Alfredo here. Mm -hmm. So then um, these are shrimp and we butterfly them just, you know, presentation wise. I'm sure the home cook doesn't have to do that, but I like to make them stand up. And so that's another thing that people do too. I like to cook the shrimp right in the sauce. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, you know, they want to cook your shrimp, cook everything separate and then try to put it all together. Mm -hmm. But the sauce will really pick up that nice, sweet flavor from the shrimp yeah. if you just let them simmer in here. Nice. So I put fresh spinach in there too, baby nice. spinach. And we just, I put it in like right kind of towards the end. So what would you say characterizes Southern food? I don't, I, it's, it's not like one thing. I've taken, you know, like all the techniques that I've learned in culinary school and try to elevate, but not overcomplicate, if that makes any sure. sense. It's not fussy cooking, 
but you know, this is gonna taste like grits and like shrimp with the cream sauce and like spinach. I think that's like the essence of it. You don't have to guess what it's gonna taste like. And that's the other part about Southern. It's so much emotion tied to it. So I can't get too crazy because it's like I'm offending somebody's grandma because they're like, oh, no, she didn't. She put black eyed peas in the collard greens. Uh uh. <laughs> So the basis of my collard greens and any good, truly Southern collard green recipe is going to be bacon fat. So I'm taking four strips of thick cut bacon. I'm just gonna chop it and then render all the fat in my pot, which I have preheating on medium high heat. While my bacon is rendering over here, and by the way, it smells Amazing, in the kitchen, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up one onion, and once the bacon is nice and crispy, I'm gonna to toss the onion in. So my onion is in there, and I want it to get nice and translucent while I get my collards ready to go. These are collard greens. They're big and they're tough and fibrous, and that's why you wanna cook them for a good long time. And so what I'm gonna do now is just strip the leaves off of these stems and then chop them up, toss them in the pot. It's really easy to strip these. You just take your fingers on the very end and you just pull. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack all these guys up and we're essentially gonna chiffonade them, which is a very fancy term for stacking something, rolling it, and cutting it into ribbons. It's very time efficient and makes it a heck of a lot easier than trying to chop up and slice evenly the individual leaves. So I'm gonna dump this into our pot. The onions are nice and slightly caramelized. It smells amazing. I did leave a little bit of water on the greens. They aren't completely dry, and that's so when I add them to the pot, they'll steam just a tiny bit and start to collapse. I'm just gonna lightly salt and pepper these greens, and then I'm gonna add in a bunch of chicken stock and our second layer of pork. And if you wanted to make this vegetarian, you definitely could. You can just use olive oil or another kind of vegetarian fat as the base and use something else that will give a smoky quality and then just use vegetable stock. I'm eyeballing this and what I'm looking for is enough liquid so that when it cooks down we have that great pot liquor at the very end and that's liquor with two K's, L-I-K-K-E-R. It's wonderful stuff, it's full of nutrients and tons of flavor so I'm gonna keep an eye on this and just make sure as these beautiful greens cook down that they don't get dry, but they have a nice texture to them. So the next addition to the collard greens and the last addition to the collard greens is a smoked pork shank. And this adds so much more flavor than just the layer of bacon because it has the bone attached. And at the end, we're gonna shred it all up so the meat will get mixed in with all of those beautiful, beautiful veggies. So while I stand here admiring this beautiful pot of greens, let's head to Kansas City and meet a couple behind what is another big trend in foods, locally made, essentially shelf-stable products. When you walk into a grocery store now, you don't just see those large national brands on the shelf, you see a lot of locally made things like pasta sauces and beer, and also infused vanillas. So let's go meet the folks behind Vane in Kansas City. When I go to the store mm -hmm. and I'm in the baking section, right. I see a couple of different types of vanilla that I can get, but this, uh -huh. it opens up an entirely new world of flavor in what is considered to be just this kind of, this staple that you just have right. in your pantry. Right, correct. Um, you know, if you're pairing this, um, you know, Tahitian bean, which is gorgeous and plump and juicy to, you know, versus an Indonesian bean, which is woodier and uh, actually has a little raisiny, you know, aroma to it. So we pair the Indonesian bean uh, with rum, 
because that natural sweetness can offset the kind of the woodiness of that bean. But how different are they? Yeah. So that's really what I'm curious right. about. And I think that folks that are right. watching, they're going to be like, how really different yeah. Yeah. is yeah. that? So what is, what is the flavor like when you have um, different beans in the same spirit? The different beans shine through, you know, the property of the bean, that Tahitian bean, that is so plump and so complex, really. Vanilla is quite a complex flavoring, that that flavor really, really comes through. And the rum, that natural sweetness, and the Indonesian bean, you know, you're not going to get as much complexity. We still extract in rum, but we feel like rum is still the perfect partner because, again, of the woody, the woodiness, you know, that we want. And so you almost get a yin-yang sort of uh, flavor element when you extract with those. So they're, they're quite different. And so some of the ways that you can use the vanilla, baking, obviously that's a gimme. Yes. But just stirring it into things like oatmeal, and then you have yeah. these coffee drops, which I think is just brilliant. Yeah. So you just put this into right. like your cream in the morning when you're frothing yeah. it. Or, or your you coffee black. It. As people who cook all the time, uh, you want to, how can we best use it? Where will it really shine? And to me, um, as, a, as somebody who cooks a lot, cooking sort of shrinks the world. You know, and it brings, think about these tropical island or these very uh, tropical places, locations where vanilla is grown. I'm bringing a little bit of the tropics, you know, into what I'm eating every morning. And that's incredible that we live in an age when we have access to these uh, wonderful different variety of beans. So dairy is a perfect partner for vanilla. Uh, you get the aroma as well and the flavor. So it was, so we decided to sort of uh, go out on a limb and take a risk and say, you know, it's a stretch to ask somebody to probably go to your pantry and get the bottle of vanilla and pour it in your coffee. So we just decided to brand it as a coffee drop. Uh, you can also put this in your instant oatmeal. You can, you know, it's vanilla extract. Uh, I put it in yogurt bowls, you know, mix it in a little yogurt. Um, there are lots of different ways to use smoothies. Well, and lots of different ways you can. You're going to show me how you actually right. fill we all are. your bottles. We are with this handmade <laughs> filler from Indiana. <laughs> Yay! I, love that. I know. Yeah. So it's small businesses helping small businesses. What I've done here is kind of what we would do on a normal basis is we'd pull out all of the, the bottles we want to fill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so would you like to try? I do want okay, to try. Okay, great. Would you like to, uh, you'd like to do the whole thing here. And so you kind of, if you want to sort of slowly get the hang of it, all it's right. just a very nuanced and it'll, there you go. You can see it flow in, perfect. We may have to fill our tube again if you get to the top of the arc. Yeah, it's actually very uh, it's calming. sort it's of zen-like. Zen. Zen. Exactly. I know, I know you're going to say that. Just spend your afternoon. Okay. Uh, How's that? A better nice job. job. You're hired. Thanks. <laughs> I feel like for you to take this spice drum that you right. created, it's right. infused with vanilla, you know it's going to corporate gifts. Right. What does that feel like as an entrepreneur? Yeah, it's amazing. Um, the best part of my job is when people will email me pictures. I had a good friend email me last night and she and her daughter were make, making their annual Christmas. They make these fudge pies and a bunch of cookies and every year and she sent me like a little video of them pouring, you know, using the vein vanilla and pouring it and that just, you know, makes my heart sing to think that uh, we're making people's food more delicious. My greens are bubbling away. They're going to take about 45 minutes and that means that I need a snack. What is better in Southern cuisine for snacking than pimento cheese? You find this on so many menus now. People are putting it on burgers and grilled cheeses, and there's a reason. It's because it is absolutely delicious. So we're gonna start with about a cup of mayonnaise, and then I'm gonna shred up two different kinds of cheddar, both sharp. You can put in things like smoked Gouda, or if you wanted to do like an extra sharp cheddar or a mild cheddar, but you want to have a little bit of a tang to it because that's what's really going to give it some depth. So we're going to add in eight ounces of cream cheese because a little extra decadence is always a good thing, especially in January. I've mixed this up just a little bit because I want to check the texture. You don't want it to be too loose, but you also don't want it to be really, really thick. So I'm going to add a little bit more mayo, and then I'm going to add the pimentos, which really are just roasted red peppers. You can roast the pepper on your own. Very, very easy to do, or they come in jars in the grocery store. We're just going to chop them up and toss them in the bowl. Now we're going to dress it up and you can dress it up however you want 
I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon of hot sauce, because you don't want all of this richness to not be played off with a little bit of heat and also vinegar. And then we're also going to include some Worcestershire sauce, which will add that little bit of nuance, some depth of flavor. And we've got a little smoked paprika, a little bit of a smoky edge, and a little bit of spice, chili powder, and then cayenne. Now we're just gonna mix all this wonderful stuff up. Oh, this is gonna be so good, and it's gonna be great with that rosé. The pimento cheese is properly mixed. I'm just gonna ladle this into a serving bowl. I'm gonna serve my pimento cheese with a whole bunch of butter crackers. And while I get this platter loaded up, let's head over and meet the guys behind Crushed Red. One of our other big culinary trends is that of the fast casual concept. They're springing up all over the place. And the Crushed Red brand launched in St. Louis and it is rapidly expanding. Hi, I'm Chris LaRocca, and we're here at Crushed Red in Clayton. When I set out to build a brand, build this brand specifically, uh, we knew it was going to be a franchisable, scalable concept while being very creative and speaking to what's in tune with, uh, with guest preference at the time. And for us, it happens to be this healthy halo um, that can be delivered with chef-driven recipes in a fast, casual environment. He had Crush Red concept that he was working on, and he asked me if I could develop pizza dough for him. And of course, I was very willing to do that, excited to do it, because that's what I like to do. In the menu creation here, the menu for me has always been the soul of any restaurant that we've done. It's all about the food. And uh, this was a lot of fun because I knew that we were going to be a chopped salad concept. And then how do you build the accessories around it? And we really settled in on pizza and how can we do an artisan style pizza? And who doesn't love pizza? It speaks to all ages. Uh, how can you do it, give it some personality, think a little differently, a little left of center, and do it very quickly? We really delved into uh, the nuances of the sweetness of the dough, um, but then also from an operational standpoint, looking at it from a quick serve perspective, I had to look at the dough system in terms of how can I make that work in a quick serve um, and, and bring those types of uh, attributes to the table also. Uh, one of the uh, flatbreads, one of the pizzas that we're really proud of is a uh, Yukon Gold Steakhouse. So we take Yukon Gold potatoes and we take a uh, hand-stretched whole grain dough and we top it with Parmesan cream and we roast Yukon Gold potatoes in the house and sirloin steak. So it's kind of that, that I don't want to say meat lovers, but it's that steak and potato with a little rosemary going on that you don't find in most pizzas. For me, it's the understanding the neighborhood of where the restaurant's going to be, looking at the void that is in the neighborhood, and how can we deliver something that nobody else is doing, um, and making it creative. We love when people come into our restaurant and say, wow, this feels like uh, something out of Southern California. Uh, and, and they scratch their heads and they're like, oh, we can't believe this started in St. Louis. Chris's creative process is, is very, it's fantastic. There's no holes barred. Everything, it's just what he wants to create. I enjoy being able to come behind that and help to fine tune that from a nutritional standpoint, um, from a, a sourcing standpoint, from a execution at the restaurant level. And there's no egos involved and it allows us to really come up with some great products. I see things come up like locally grown and uh, sustainable, and they're more than just buzzwords. What we've done is taken, taken the restaurant business and helped folks that aren't that comfortable with it 
and we flattened the learning curve out and we helped them along and we developed some creative concepts along the way. My greens are looking amazing. They've been on the stove for about 40 minutes or so. And you can tell when your greens are getting to that really luscious, silky stage when they start to turn that beautiful army green. They're, they're getting close to that spot right now. So I am gonna go ahead and uh, fry up those crispy shallots that we're gonna be sprinkling on top of the greens when we serve them. And with the shallots, I'm gonna be soaking them in buttermilk. So I'm just gonna slice these into slivers and put them in a bowl. If you're cutting shallots or onions and, you, and it calls for a julienne version, the way that you cut it is you cut the bulb in half and then you just slice it almost in a half moon shape lengthwise. And then you end up with these really lovely thin cuts. It's a really easy way to accomplish that. My shallots are julienned and now I'm gonna soak these guys in buttermilk which is going to help the coating adhere because we're going to be tossing it in flour. And it also just kind of marinates that shallot in that beautiful kind of almost sour flavor of the buttermilk. So I'm just gonna stir this up a little bit and we're gonna let this sit for roughly 35 to 45 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put together just the flour mixture that we're going to coat these shallots in. And these shallots are just gonna be sprinkled on top of those greens. Got a, about a cup or so of just all-purpose flour, good amount of salt. So we've got some pepper. And we're gonna spice it up again because it's the south and you need to have a little spice. We've got cayenne. And then just a little bit of chili powder. I've preheated my pan. I'm, I'm adding in a good amount of just canola oil. You can use peanut oil, grapeseed oil. I want to make sure that the shallots will be submerged when they're fried. And so I'm going to let this heat up just a little bit before I dredge those shallot slices. I'm just going to toss these little shallot slices in the flour making sure to get rid of the excess. And I'm gonna to toss them in that good hot oil and fry them up. So while I'm doing all of this fun frying, I wanna take you to the streets of St. Louis on a bike. The guys behind Food Peddler are bringing restaurant food straight to the doors of hungry St. Louisans. This is another trend that is gaining ground, the concept of convenience in foods, bringing things straight to your door. So let's hit the streets of the Central West End right now. St. Louis just has a tremendous amount of potential for cycling, it's a beautiful place to ride. And then the food scene, the community here is just amazing. Hi, I'm Tim Kiefer, founder of Food Peddler. I love this job because I get to ride bikes every day. Even when, even when it's stressful, when orders are flying around, I'm still on my bike. Like, that's, that's the common denominator. That's what it comes down to. I'm riding my bike, and that is what I really love to do. Initially, it was, um, I had a bike and a cell phone, and like, that's how we were doing it. So picking the Central West End was like a no-brainer. Super easy, uh, just the density of excellent restaurants and establishments. Um, it's incredibly bikeable and not very uh, drivable. <laughs> Our first delivery was May of 2013, but we really started getting traction. The end of 2013, beginning of 2014, we added the Loop the summer of 2014, and then we just added Clayton this past summer. Like, we're growing as much as we want right now, because <laughs> we're working on a lot of other neat things. So when an order comes in, I get a notification on my phone, and then I call the restaurant, place the order, and then about 10 to 15 after that, I go to the restaurant and pick up the food and bring it to them. No order's really that too big. Like, I've delivered Indian food for like 30 people before. This is our third winter, and we've closed, in this amount of time, we've closed twice for weather. 
ever. I was a bike commuter for 10 years before this, so I, when I had a job, if it was raining, I still went to work. Uh, when the weather is bad, put on a rain jacket. People do want delivery. You know, people always get delivery, and there are just not a lot of quality options all the time. It's really flattering. Like, people really do love us. They love seeing us. And one thing that I do love is, like, I've met so many people, and there are so many people that I can say are my friend now, because I do this. We're already working towards opening uh, downtown right now. So that'll be next. Uh, hope sooner, sooner than later, because we have a lot of uh, amazing, like, potential partners lined up for downtown already. Every month, we're giving a presentation at our co-working space, Tech Artista, here in the Central West End. And we're doing interviews on the spot, and if we find great people, we're going to you know, we're gonna make room for them for sure. How will we expand? Um, a lot of this just depends on great people like Michael or Theo or Elizabeth, these just awesome peddlers we have. So like, it really just depends on like, how many, you know, good people we have to help us grow. And so, yeah, that's, that's really where it comes down to. As you can see, my mound of beautiful fried shallots is ready to go and while we were watching that last segment I went ahead and pulled the bone out of the pot this pork shank and I went ahead and shredded the meat and put it back into the pot some shanks will just fall apart on their own but if it doesn't definitely pull it out shred that meat and that way all of that wonderful smoky juicy pork is mixed in with those greens. This is all steamy and heated through. Oh, I love collard greens. Look at that. They are silky and broken down and it's beautifully tender. Oh my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful. And then here is that storied pot liquor. I'm gonna spoon just a little bit extra on top. That's where all that good flavor is. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And just a little bit of those crispy shallots. It adds a crunch and also a wonderful sweetness to the dish. If you want, you can drizzle it with just a little bit of vinegar so you have that acidic bite as well. It just kind of balances everything out. Or hot sauce, because again, what's more Southern than a good dash of hot sauce? Now I'm pairing this once again with a rosé, and this rosé is a dry style. Don't think that white Zinfandel, that sweet stuff, is anything like these wonderful dry rosés that are being made by our local winemakers. This is a wine by Stone Hill, which is in the Herman region and it has wonderful kind of strawberry aroma, but because it's dry, it, it doesn't have any of that kind of like sticky sweetness and it's really gonna balance out all the rich dishes, all the Southern favorites that we've made today. So cheers, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>